Good morning everyone. We are the group 9. And today we're going to discuss programming languages, expressions, and statements. Control flow. First, let's define an expression. Expressions are the fundamental means of specifying computations in a programming language. They are used to compute and assign values to variables and to help control the execution flow of a program. In order to understand its evaluation, we need to be familiar with the orders of operator and operand evaluation. The essence of imperative languages such as Pascal, C, Java, etc. has dominant role in assignment statements. A common and essential expression in programming language is arithmetic expression. Its characteristics were inherited from conventions that had evolved in math. It consists of operators, operands, parentheses, and function calls. Its operators can be unary or binary. And in C-based languages, there's the unary operator, which has three operands and can be seen in a conditional expression. Arithmetic expression's purpose is to specify an arithmetic computation, and an implementation of such computation must cause two actions which are to fetch the operands a memory and execute the arithmetic operations on those operands. In designing an arithmetic expression, there are six issues or things to consider. First, what are the operator precedence rules? Second, what are the operator associativity rules? Third, what is the order of operand evaluation? Number four, are there restrictions on operand evaluation side effects? Number five, does the language allow user-defined operator overloading? And lastly, what mode mixing is allowed in expressions? All this can be further discussed as we go more on this topic. Let's first tackle the operator evaluation order. Number one, precedence. The operator precedence rules for expression evaluation define the order in which adjacent operators of different precedence levels are evaluated. When we say adjacent, they are separated by most one operand. Typically, precedence levels include parentheses, unary operators, double asterisk. If the language supports it, asterisk or multiply and slash or divide then plus and minus. Many languages also include unary versions of addition and subtraction. Unary addition is called the identity operator because it usually has no associated operation and thus has no effect on its operand. But in Java, unary plus actually does have an effect when its operand is short or byte. An implicit conversion of short and byte operands to end type takes place. Here's a unary minus operator example. A plus minus b enclosed in parentheses multiplied by c is legal. However, if the parenthesis enclosing minus b is excluded, it is considered as illegal. The second operator is associativity. Its rules for expression evaluation define the order in which adjacent operators with the same precedence level are evaluated. An operator can be either left or right associative. Typical associativity rules include left to right, except double asterisk, which is right to left. Sometimes unary operators associate right to left such as Fortran. Here are some examples. In Java, A minus B plus C is a left to right associative. In Fortran, a double asterisk B double asterisk C is a right to left associative. In Ada, it must be parenthesized a double asterisk B are enclosed in parentheses then double asterisk C. As you can see in table, Sample languages such as Fortran, C-based, and Ada with their associativity roles are shown. APL is different. All operators have equal precedence and all operators associate right to left. For example, A times B plus C commented as A is equal to 3. B is equal to 4 and C is equal to 5, 1, 2, 7. However, precedence and associativity rules can be overridden with parentheses, 
which is the third operational evaluation order. Programmers can alter the precedence and associativity rules by placing parentheses in expressions. A parenthesized part of an expression has precedence over its adjacent and parenthesized parts. For example, a plus b enclosed in parentheses times c. In this, the parenthesized part, which is a plus b, will be calculated or evaluated first rather than b times c. If b times c are the ones being parenthesized, then they will be the first to be evaluated disregarding the left-to-right associativity rules. The next one is conditional expressions. Sometimes, if-then-else statements are used to perform a conditional expression assignment. Given this example, if count is equal to 0, average will be 0. Else, average will be equal to sum divided by count. In the C-based languages, this can be specified more conveniently in an assignment statement using a conditional expression. Note that the question mark symbol is used in conditional expressions as a ternary operator or having three operands. Given this, expression underscore one, question mark, expression underscore two, colon, then expression underscore three. Average is equal to count equals to zero, question mark, zero, colon, sum divided by count, then semicolon. Here's the overall operand evaluation process. Variables to just fetch the value from memory. Constants, which sometimes a fetch from memory and sometimes is in the machine language instruction. Then parenthesis expressions, which evaluate all operands and operators first. Now let's talk about the operand evaluation side effects. A side effect is of a function is called a functional side effect. This occurs when the function changes either one of its parameters or a global variable. Example, a plus fun function with a parameter of a. If fun does not have the side effect of changing a, then the order of evaluation of the two operands a and fun a has no effect on the value of the expression. However, if fun changes a, there will be an effect. Let's consider this following situation. Fun returns the value of its argument divided by 2 and changes its parameter to have the value 20 and a is equal to 10 and b is equal to a plus fun a. If the value of a is returned first in the expression evaluation process, its value is 10 and the value of the expression is 15. This is because 10 will be divided by 2 which is equal to 5. Then added by 10 following the expression, the result is 15. But if the second is evaluated first, then the value of the expression is 25. Here's a C program which illustrates the same problem. Integer variable a with a value of 5 is declared first, followed by an integer function named fun1. A has a value of 17 and then return 3. Next is a void fun2 function. A is equal to A plus a function call which is fun1. In C language, A is equal to 20 and in Java, A is equal to 8. Inside the main function is the function fun2. The value computed for A in fun2 depends on the order of evaluation of the operands in the expression A plus function fun1, wherein the value of A will be either 8 or 20. There are two possible solutions. First, write the language definition to disallow functional side effects. There's no two-way parameters and no non-local references and functions. Its advantage is that it works, but it cannot meet the programmer's demand for the flexibility of two-way parameters and non-local references, which makes it its disadvantage. The second solution is to write the language definition to demand that operand evaluation order be fixed. This solution entails a disadvantage of a limited of some compiler optimizations. In Java, the operands are guaranteed to be evaluated in left-to-right order, eliminating this problem. So now let's proceed to overloaded operators. If the operator is used for more than one purpose, it is called operator overloading. A very popular and convenient example is the addition operator 
which operates on two numbers like for integers and float, and the same operator operates on two strings. In Java, plus operator is used for addition and for string concatenation. In string concatenation, addition operator can be used between strings to add them together to make a new string. Some operator overloading can also cause potential trouble. For example, the operator AND in C and C++. In the example, we can see here x equals AND or ampers AND y. AND here is considered as a binary operator bitwise logical or as a unary which is the address of y. In this case, it causes the address of y to be placed in x. Potential problems include loss of readability to use the same symbol for two completely unrelated operations and it is difficult to diagnose. These problems can be avoided by introduction of new symbols like the Pascal's div for integer division and slash symbol for floating point division. C++ and ADA allow user-defined overloaded operators. Type conversions Converting one data type into another data type is called type conversions. In type conversions, there are two, the narrowing and widening conversion. Narrowing conversion converts an object to a type that cannot include all of the values of the original type. So for example, double to float. On the other hand, in widening conversion, object is converted to a type that can include at least approximation to all of the values of the original type. For example, integer to float. Coercion in expressions. Coercion is an implicit type conversion. Type coercion occurs when two operands of different types are used together in a mixed mode expression. A mixed mode expression is one that has operands of different types. The disadvantage of coercions is that they decrease in the type error detection ability of the compiler. In most languages, all numeric types are coerced in expressions using widening conversions. Language are not in agreement on the issue of coercions in arithmetic expressions. Those against a broad range of coercions are concerned with the reliability problems that can result from such coercions because they eliminate the benefits of type checking. Those who would rather include a wide range of coercions are more concerned with the loss in flexibility that results from restrictions. In the example shown, assume that the second operand was supposed to be C instead of D. Because mixed mode expressions are legal in Java, the compiler would not detect this as an error. Simply, B will be coerced to float. Another type conversion is the explicit type, also called casts in C-based languages. Explicit type conversion is done by the user by using type operator. Users convert data type of an object to, required, to a required data type. The difference between implicit and explicit type conversion is that implicit type conversion, or also known as automatic type conversion, is done by the compiler on its own, without any external trigger from the user, while explicit type conversion is user-defined. Here, the user can type cast the result to make it of a particular data type. Errors in expressions are caused by inherent limitations of arithmetic, such as division by zero, and the limitations of computer arithmetic, for example, overflow or underflow. The division by zero and this overflow or underflow are examples of runtime errors, which sometimes which sometimes called exceptions. Relational and Boolean Expressions Relational operator is an operator that compares the values of its two operands. Relational expressions are two operands and one relational operator. The value of relational expression is boolean, unless it is not a type included in the language. As we can see in the table, operator symbols or the syntax of relational operators vary among language. In boolean exp expressions, operands are boolean and the result is boolean. Versions of C prior to C99 uses integer type with 0 for false and non-0 for true. 
since it has no boolean type. An odd characteristics of C's expression is this legal expression. A less than B less than C. Although this is a legal expression, the result is not what you expect. The leftmost operator is evaluated first because the relational operators of C are left associative producing either 0 or 1. And this result is compared with variable C. There is never a comparison between B and C. Now, let us proceed in, sh in short circuit evaluation. Short circuit evaluation of an expression is one in which the result is determined without evaluating all of the operands or operators. An example, when A is equal to 0, there's no need to evaluate B divided by 13 minus 1 or perform the second multiplication. However, this shortcut is not easily detected during execution, so it is never taken. Then, we have here the value of the Boolean expression which is independent of the second expression if A is less than 0. Because f logical and x is false for all the value of x. So when a is less than 0, there's no need to evaluate b, the constant 10, the second relational expression, or the logical end operation. Unlike the case of arithmetic expressions, this shortcut can be easily discovered during execution. Short circuit evaluation exposes the potential problem of side effects in expressions. Now, we will tackle assignment statements C-based languages use double equal sign as the equality relational operator to avoid confusion with their assignment operator. In Fortran, BASIC, PL1C, C++, and Java, they use equal sign while in ALGOL, Pascal, and ADA, they use is set equals to. So in the example, the left side expressions or statements are logically equivalent to the right side expressions or statements. Compound assi assignment operators. It is a shorthand method of specifying a commonly needed form of assignment. The form of assignment that can be abbreviated with this technique has the destination variable also appearing as the first operand in the expression on the right side. As in A equals A plus B, the syntax of assignment operators that, that is the continuations of the desired binary operator to the equals operator. So sum plus equals value is logically equivalent to sum equals sum plus value. Unary assignment operators. C-based languages include two special unary operators that are actually abbreviated assignments. They combine increment and decrement operations with assignments. The operators plus plus or increment and decrement that can be used either in expressions or to form stand alone single operator assignment statements they can appear as prefix operators sum equals plus plus count is logically equivalent to count equals count plus one sum equals count if the same operator is used as a postfix operator sum equals count plus plus is logically equivalent equivalent to sum equals count. Count equals count plus one. Assignment as an expression. This design treats the assignment operator much like any other binary operator, except that it has the side effect of changing its left overrun in the example. Why there is a parenthesis around assignment? The assignment statement must be parenthesized because the the precedence of the assignment operator is lower than that of the relational operators. In the example below, it is an another kind of expression side effect which leads to expressions that are difficult to read and understand. There is also loss of error detections in the C design of the assignment operations that frequently leads to program errors such as if x equals y is used instead of x double equals sine y. And now for the last topic to tackle, mixed mode assignment. In Fortran, C and C++, any numeric value can be assigned to any numeric scalar variable whatever convers conversions is necessary is done. In Pascal, integers can be assigned to reals but reals cannot be assigned to the integers. In Java, only widening assi assignment quotients are done.
In ADA, there is no assignment coercions in all languages that allow mixed mode assignment. The coercion takes place only after the right side expressions has been evaluated. So, consider the following code in the example. Because C is float, the values of A and B could be coerced to float before the divisions, which could produce a different value for C than if the coercion were delayed. For example, if A were 2 and B were 3. And that's the end of our discussions. Thank you everyone and God bless.